We set sail with a course to the west Heart of blue and the song of the wind in my chest Steady we flew as we braced for the waves and thunder Crystal blue, see you break through the smoke Here with you in the dark, no I'm never alone Guiding me through when I'm lost in the waves and thunder It's different like a few days ago that just didn't exist and that is the thing that is crazy to me about making music hey everyone thanks for checking out the video if you're new here welcome along and if you're a returning subscriber you're the best i'm gonna break down this dark pop trap beat and try and give you as many of the tips and the tricks that i use to try and make it hit different the creative ideas the mixing the drum layering the guitar production the vocals all that stuff and i really hope you find it valuable and if you do you know what to do <laughs> let us dive in to the break. So this is a pretty big project so far and there's a lot going on. I'll just break it down in each section. I started off with the guitar. I was trying to find a cool chord progression but maybe just play it a little differently and I did this. I couldn't think of a way to play that progression and play the notes the way my mind was picturing it so to get the idea down quickly I just broke it down into the individual notes just played them and made sure that I got a tone that I liked and then I could just piece them all together. You can see here it's broken down into the bass notes. So I just recorded each one individually and then sent them either side, left and right. Then recorded the bits in between. Pairing that together. had one that I'd recorded previously that was of a texture that I didn't like as much. It wasn't as clean or as obvious what was going on. I wasn't playing it with very much clarity because I hadn't started breaking down the notes. And then I found pairing those two together was really nice because having the notes just broken down individually sounded a little bit robotic and not quite as human as I would like. pretty aggressive distortion on the wave shaper but then I've just pulled it right down so there's hardly any of it actually coming through so if I put that right up I might do that later on if I want to try and make everything a little bit more energetic and aggressive but certainly for the intro it's not something I wanted to put into overdrive I added on some little arpeggios and I sent them to a slightly different channel so that I can make them more spacious and reverb And then you just take that four bar loop and copy it and paste it all the way across and then just add and remove whichever bits you want wherever it makes sense to. So for example in this section I just take it away. With you in the dark, no, I'm never alone. Guiding me through when I'm lost in the waves and thunder. What I could then do at this side here is because I've got both of them and they're sent to either side. This particular one, I just have it going right, left, right, left, really quickly. You wouldn't notice that that is what's happening because it happens so quickly, but it just adds to the experience for your ears. The next elements were these instrument sounds, so synths and strings, and I got the strings from Arcade. And the fact that it comes up and then disappears is really important because if it was on full volume all the way through, your brain would start to drown it out. So for example here. In the dark, no, I'm never alone. Guiding me through when I'm lost. 
lost in the waves and thunder. I just wanted it to swell and give you the shivers and then disappear again. I just love dramatic cinematic string sounds and all that kind of thing, it's so cool. Then within Serum, I was using this lead sound that I've used before in other songs, but I actually turned one aspect of it down and just kept a really simple sine wave and had it in mono, which means that every time you play another note, the other one gets canceled out. So you can't play chords, but it makes it jump in a really interesting way. <laughs> I just have it playing on that root note, the A, or the A sharp, and then jumping up and down to... So you can see I've got the porta up a little bit down here just to make it glide a little bit between the notes. the distortion, this diode one distortion that does pretty much all of the work. The thing I love about making tracks like this and actually writing lyrics and adding more things into it instead of just making a 20 second beat loop is that you can start telling stories with the sounds that you're bringing in, just making everything much more dynamic and interesting. So I've got several patterns that they all do similar things but in certain sections I've just made it a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Pulling the dry volume away and then throwing it right back again even higher. That section I tied in purposefully with the lyrics where I say, feel the cold as it crawls down my spine. And then the little scale goes better, better and crawls down. Feel the cold as it crawls down my spine. I am full with your light in my eyes. Maybe it's sad that I get excited about little things like that, but I do and um, <laughs> I'm not going to pretend that I don't. The next element that I added in was just this ridiculously chunky sub. And you can see by the waveform when I printed it out. I actually had to be careful because when I'm not running this through effects and I play it, I can almost break my... <laughs> I almost broke my speakers. Chonky. Okay, so I made this one in Vital and there was a Jupiter bass preset that I found and then I started playing around with it, moving things into different positions and then really pushed the distortion. So it was originally, I think, a soft clip and then I pushed it up to a hard clip. The LFOs just gradually open up that drive as it's pulling along, but I also have an automation on the mix here so that if I don't want it to wob around too much, then I can just pull that down. And this is what the automation is doing here. So when it's way down, it kind of just warbles, it doesn't do anything too aggressive. Whereas here in the choruses, when I wanted it to come up much more, I could then get it to do that by just pulling the mix of that up and just having the drive gradually increasing there. So of course the next element were the drums and again the pattern overall is very simple. I just add in some nice textures, folly and then just cheeky little drum fills and runs to tie in with whatever's happening with the lyrics. So I've got one main kick, which has some pretty nice crunchy high end and is pretty powerful. But then I've got a kick mute, which is thicker, more full and has more sub in it. So I have the two of them playing together. So there's a bit more presence up in the high end, but there's also a nice thickness in the low end. Then the snare, It's more of a snap clap, but I've paired that with another folly sound. Just to give it some more grit and just interest. And then just some really nice crispy hats. And 
the cool thing with the kicks was I made a couple of them unique and just added in a couple of other swells. And I just do that by filling in each of the notes and putting them slightly lower down and then in gradually increasing the volume too. And of course, in order to mix those drums in, I just have a really heavy sidechain with the kick and the snare going to the guitar and the instrument effects and the instruments and the vocal effects. Not the vocals themselves, but the vocal effects. Then just some sweetening, just to make things a little bit more interesting, just added in some cool sound effects. So right at the beginning, I'm talking about being devoted to mother nature and the moon and the light that mother nature gives you and well i don't know you can read into the lyrics however you want i just had a picture of going on a voyage over a sea somewhere and i wanted to throw in some waves just to tie that in one of the main things that gives it its characteristics which i haven't actually mentioned yet is the fact that it's in 6-8 timing most trap and pop beats often end up being 4-4, four, four. it's just the easiest one to work with, but the initial guitar pattern that came to me was just following that rhythm, it was in 6-8. And usually things like that, sea shanties, those kind of things, they have that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. If you want to do that yourself, you just have to go up to general settings, project, and then the time base, you just make 6 the numerator and 8 the denominator. So that would be one of the main keys or tips that I would give, is to step outside of the box every now and again. Try experiment with something else, because I was really pleased with how well this was working, and it actually gives you lots of space in the drum pattern to add all of those little interesting elements in. I took a folly loop from the Sicky Beat sample pack and reversed it. it. Just sounded really nice and crunchy, gritty, distorted, almost like some like chains or something like that being moved on a ship. And I thought, okay, I love how gritty that sound is. Because I knew I wanted something to be pushing into the drums as each of them came in. and oh, it worked so well. I then just found another more aggressive reverse sound. The very first kick that I have, I've got like an aggressive breaking sound, which is just ice being broken through. And it just makes that first kick hit that bit harder. But if you put it on all of them, it would be a little bit too overwhelming. It just makes your head want to bang and it's ace. It's so much fun adding those little things in. You obviously have to be careful not to do too many of them, but they're really great fun. At the end of every two bar phrase, I would throw a reverse sound in. You just have to not overdo it and also not make the sample too loud. Hide my way through the darkest of nights. Keep me safe. The other sound effect I added in was when I said, feel the cold as it crawls down my spine. I had that synth running down, but I also wanted to add in some sort of sound effect that would signify that. And so I had these chime bells and they kind of sound all right when they're going forward, but again, I just thought it'd be cool to reverse them, so I did. I felt it captured the eeriness I wanted to go for a little bit more than just the sort of magical sound of a chime as it usually would sound. And I also wanted that sound to rise like everything else and instead of just plonking a sound effect there. That's the thing. You can just throw sounds in, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will work. You have to do quite a lot to try and make sure that it still blends in or ties in with what else is going on in the track. The last thing that I did, just as an extra element to make the intro a little bit more interesting with that guitar sound because it's more on its own, is just paired the same thing but with the piano. And I would probably keep doing things like that if I were to turn this into a final song just to make it that much more full and interesting. I 
just find it helps support that guitar sound initially. But I don't have it throughout the rest of it because I think it just ends up being too congested. There's too many things going on. For the vocals, I just have the lead vocal idea up here. Let sail with a course to the west. Heart of blue and the song of the wind in my chest. And to come up with these lyrics, I usually create the drums, the instrumental, stuff like that first, but I was transferring a bunch of files on my computer and I didn't want to open up the project whilst I was doing that, just in case. So I actually just sat with the guitar and the loop. I have this loop pedal and I just sat and created that first basic loop with the guitar and then wrote all of the lyrics first. So I just had a loop like this and I was just trying to come up with different lyric ideas. So I use Google Drive, I just opened up a Google Drive document and just started brainstorming, writing down the words that were coming to my head. So things like we set sail, course to the west, waves and thunder, stuff like that. The idea behind throwing the words down is that it's unlikely for me that the lyrics will just happen immediately. Sometimes that does happen, but most of the time I just have to throw down ideas and then it's like a puzzle. You have to start piecing them together, but it's hard to piece together a puzzle if you haven't got any pieces. So throwing down any just brainstorming random words and then throw out melody ideas and then try and piece those things together. That's usually how I approach the lyrics so that I'm not worried about trying to get perfect final vocals straight away. I would just record the main vocal vocal idea and then that would usually end up turning into a layer. Daddy, we flew as we brace for the waves and thunder. So I've just got a left and right and it's more or less doing exactly the same thing as the main one. I just compress them a lot and cut out most of the low end and a lot of the mid range is ducked down and then I just push up the high end because you're just trying to color the sides and just make the whole vocal a little bit more interesting. And if you keep those low frequencies and mid frequencies up, it then actually ends up competing with this main vocal. Daddy, we flew as we brace for the waves and thunder. And for a lot of the words that I really actually want to emphasize, I find it's actually better to cut away those words. In the dark, no, I'm never alone. When I talked about never being alone, I wanted to kind of contrast with the track by making it feel more reduced and minimal and then everything comes back together. Almost to make you feel alone and then remind you that you're not alone. Here with you in the dark, no, I'm never alone. Guiding me through. And I left that breath in because I wanted the emotion that was in that sentence to come through. A lot of the times I will just cut out breaths and syllables. Here with you in the dark, no, I'm never alone. Guiding me through when I'm lost in the waves and thunder. Light my way through the dark. Then for these extra layers, I most of the time will cut out all of the gaps and the breaths in between, and a lot of the S's and T's are introductory sounds. And I always cut and drag them so that they are as in time as they can be. So use the metronome and just listen and see how well does that hit on the beat. I'll never know something so pure and so true. Blue moon, feel the cold, dizzy crawl down my spine. In certain sections, it's okay to move away from that. For example, here when I say crawl down my spine, I deliberately kind of stumble over it, make it slower and a little bit more interesting. Blue moon, feel the cold, dizzy crawl down my spine. Because it should be, feel the cold, does it crawl down my spine? but I just decided to drag it out and make it a little bit more interesting. So of course, there are no definite rules, but for most of the time, I try and make everything as well in time, particularly with these extra layers. So if you listen to these vocals on their own, it sounds strange. Still blue, see you break through the smoke. Here with you in the dark. For example, when I say the words deer. Here with you in the dark, no, I'm never alone. I only wanted the d to be emphasized by the main vocal. Here with you. Whereas the other two I cut it out. Here with you. So it sounds like I'm saying ear with you, but it doesn't matter because you hear the d from the main vocal. Here with you in the dark, no, I'm never alone. Guiding me through when I'm lost in the waves and thunder. Then I just found a cool little vocal sample that I wanted to use to emphasize the song of the wind. Blue and the song of the wind in my chest. Steady we flew as we brace for the waves and thunder. And then I just used that same sample in the choruses. Light my way through the darkest of nights. Keep me safe through the hardest, the hardest. 
So that was that. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it valuable. And if you do, I'd love to hear from you. It's great hearing from you all in the comments or send me a message on my Instagram. And I really look forward to sharing the next video with you. And you can probably click on one of those right now. But until then, believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable. Bye. Hide my way through the dark.